Welcome, everybody. And of course, welcome to this week's um, Extreme Business Set Mind Series with myself, Paul Reese, and of course, the main man, Lee Tani Ware. Um, now, we have, first of all, I want to thank all you people that are, all your viewers, all the people that listen, watch out, watch our uh, stuff on YouTube, listen to podcasts. Um, we are very grateful. And for all the feedback that's coming here, Again, it's amazing that so many people are benefiting. Me and Lee benefit from this every week because we get to join our minds, our hearts, and we get to just really explore wisdom Ooh. on so many levels. And that's the whole idea that you can then explore your wisdom um, from listening to these podcasts, listen, watching these webinars. And please reach out um, and of course, subscribe, like, comment, and all those beautiful things that, um, that you guys need to do in order for us to stay part of this community that we're creating because there's so much more to come later in the year and moving into 24. But you we go, Lee. This week's subject, uh, you're going to love this. So oh. I'm gonna, it's a very simple start, which is networking with purpose. But use, oh. use, use we are. There are four categories that I've put in this that I see um, happens in networking, which is first, net repeating. Second, networking. Third, net worlding. And fourth, net futuring. I want to touch on all these. So I'm going to say them again quickly. Number one is net repeating. Then we have networking, net worlding, and net futuring. I would like to sort of sort of dive into how these play out because I'm going to say you bluntly, 99% of networking, and I'm sorry if you don't agree, is absolutely pointless. It's no more than parrot working. Yes, I said that, parrot working. So I want us just to dive into, because the so many people are busy networking and just assuming that because they've networked, they've done the work. When, effect when effectively, I'm seeing a lot of business become unsuccessful because they're networking. I just said that. Unsuccessful because they are net repeating or networking and have no purpose or substance. So let's start with number one, net repeating. Now, for me, this is like empty networking. Mm. has absolutely no purpose other than turning up. And just like feeding the birds, it has a feel-good factor, but you're feeding somebody else, not yourself. Yeah. See, I have a different name for it. I call it like uh, Vegas networking. <laughs> That's what I call it. It's like you're going in and you're gonna you're playing roulette and you you you're hoping you're gonna get lucky. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. That's so, mad. Yeah, so it's like you're rolling the dice and hoping seven comes up. So, um, and there's a few. I think think this, but to me, it's reality. As you know, I run a lot of networking events. I do a lot of training around networking and help people upskill. The hardest bit I find from my side of the fence is that people have their concept of networking. And if it's serving them, that's fine. But if it's not serving them and they're busy fools and and you've got the personal bit to them when you when you say it, like they go into the defense rather than we'll hang about and what I say is leave it on the outside. It's just noise, what I'm saying. It's just noise. Leave it on the outside. Don't take it personally. Bear in mind, networking is a business. Business isn't personal. It's business, not personal. I mean, it's been said thousands of times, which means your emotions aren't involved in it. Um, but networking in my world and the way I train my networks and it, yeah, is that it's got to be focused. So it's – and there's a few variables I think that's got in the, the way – is one, the elevator pitch. Yeah, nothing wrong with having a clear message, but an elevator pitch is for the elevator. It should be like you've got moments that and it's an opportunity. It's Vegas networking. You might say something to the right person at the right time and they might go, oh, have you got your card yet? And there might be something come out of it. So I'm not not putting down the the elevator pitch. Then there's the like the 60 seconds like from sort of say the B and I world. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot with B and I. And love B and I. So I'm not putting any network down or any process down, but I think there's a better way. So the 60 seconds, and I never I never realized this 
until I was I was because the nudge I got, yeah, the nudge I got was this, yeah. And bear in mind, I used to train people now to deliver a, a, an effective sixty seconds. So I could be at BNI training, as in being being trained by people that knew this game very well. And I was that good at a 60 seconds that sometimes, like the ED, whoever's running the training, would say, Lee, give me a 60 seconds on a um, financial planner. In other words, a, a 60 seconds of financial planner. Go. And he just pressed the clock when he said it. And I would stand up and deliver a 60 seconds, and it'd go ding, ding, and he'd say, now you know why he's number one in the country, because I was number one in in – our region for a while the region split up, but in P and I terms for seven and a half years, I was the number one. They have like traffic lights, they score every. And I was the number one networker for approximately seven to seven and a half years. As in I sat in the number one slot. So it was like the top of the pops charts, yeah. Oh, I yeah. sat in the number one slot. And don't hear that from ego, because what I'm trying to say is that I was doing all the doing. I, I had the score and I had the stats to show it. And then um, I joined Toastmasters. And you'll see, where's he going with this? But I'll make it very clear in a sec. And I was in Toastmasters, and and I ended up representing Ireland in an international speech competition. I only got two or three speeches away from being world champion. Wow. So because of that, and the re I've told you that bit, so I can tell you this bit, and I've told you all the rest, because now the, the, the aha bit's coming. Athlone, I can't remember Athlone's Toastmaster Club. I can't remember if it was their 20th birthday. It was their birthday anyway. I can't remember which one it was. It was a landmark one, 20 or 30 years, or something like that. And because I represented Ireland, I was one of the guests that was invited. And Ross and I went. And a friend of mine, Jerry Duffy, was there. And Jerry would be probably Ireland's top um, motivational speaker. Yeah, He's a very well-known guy, a very good friend of mine. And Jerry was the keynote speaker at that moment. And there was a couple of other speakers. And there was one guy there that had been in Toastmasters for about 20 years. And he stood up and done a keynote. And that keynote really hit home with me and made me see so much that I never saw before. And it wasn't in his speech, as in there was just one piece he said that really, and I thought, oh, my God. And what he said was he'd been in Toastmasters for like 20, like he's been in there about 20 years. And he said he remembers the first time he went and done. Now, bear in mind, he'd done hundreds of speeches for Toastmasters. And he said he went out after, after about 15 years of being a Toastmaster onto, let's call it the, the, the national stage, yeah. And he said he was on stage doing a speech for about 500 people. Bear in mind, he knew, knew how to do a speech. He knew how to deliver a speech. And in Toastmasters, they're taught, you're taught how to sort of put a rhetorical question in. So you don't expect an answer from it because you're talking to an audience. But they teach you in such a way to be able to say it where it sounds like a conversation, mm -hmm. yeah. And he said, I remember the first professional speech done where he was actually getting paid for it on stage. And he said to an audience about 500 people, he said, I'd put in a rhetorical question like we're taught to do. He said, and the audience answered it. He said, I woke up really quick. He said, I realised that the Toastmaster world, even though a very good world, he said, prepared me to deliver a speech, but didn't prepare the audience. He said, when we deliver a speech in Toastmasters to Toastmasters, he said, two things are happening. We're being trained to deliver a speech effectively, but the audience is being trained to hear a speech. Yeah. Yeah. So when we give the elevator pitch, it's fine if the person's trained to hear it. When we give a 60 seconds, like in the BNI world, BNI world is very similar to Toastmasters. The 60 seconds in a BNI world or networks like them, you've got an audience that's trained to dissect. They're trained what a 60 seconds is and what to listen out for and what to put in. So when you deliver a 60 seconds to a trained ear, they know exactly, oh, Paul's looking for this, and this is where his focus is. But the standard everyday business audience doesn't know what a 60 seconds is or an elevator pitch. So let me, and, let me, and, yeah, go on. Let me jump in on that. So we, there's a difference... And we could say a 60 second power pitch to a 60 second delivery. But also, let's say we are net repeating, which is I'm going to a network event every week and I'm doing my 60 second power pitch. We could say 
that is just net repeating. But if we are networking, we're delivering a 60 second power pitch, we could say, to an audience that is trained to hear that pitch yeah, in order you could to take it like that. You. Yeah, you, yeah, you could take it like that. And this is where I would take it into sort of different space, not to correct you, because, yeah, yeah it's what's your goals? What's the outcome? And now, because there's, there's another layer, there's a few layers to it, but let's go to the next layer that many of the 60 seconds or the elevator pitches, however long, three minutes, 60 seconds, whatever, is irrelevant, are there to sell products a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Lee Tony Ware, and I make pens. And we make a wide selection of pens. Now, I can go into that, yeah, for all types, yeah, so we can give you the professional pen, yeah, at the top level, C-suite, or we can give you the basic pen, yeah. So, and we can put your brand on it, whatever, yeah, because you're covering the pain points for them. And if they like what you hear and it's related to where they are, yeah, it's the roulette type of delivery because you don't know who your audience is. And the first thing you need know to know is who your audience is. And people buy from people. Yeah. Now, networking is nothing to do with selling. It is nothing to do with selling. Wow. And that's where, oh, and, I, cause, and this is where people really, really, really need need help by the scruff of the neck and a flick around the ear. Because networking is nothing to do with selling. And if you hear that bit and take it as the truth, yeah. it is this. Networking is networking. It's going in, building relationships with like-minded people, entrepreneurs, business owners, business professionals that have already got the target market. They've already built their business in a certain area. Now how can you collaborate? So you want to be seen, you want to be, but because 90%, 95% of people go out selling pens or phones or services or we're the best in such and such and we've been doing it for 25 years, blah, blah, blah. It's network has nothing to do with that until you built the relationship in the network. So the reason we're on Zoom at the minute, because of a network. I'm going for a router to a, a server to a router to a server, and you're doing the same thing, and we've met in one space. Networking is networking. It's loads of hubs of different people. So the routers, one of your one of your network, one of your people, yeah. and they're connected to a server, which is like a, a market that has got loads of people. So let me throw it this way. I can say, hi, I'm Lee Tony Ware from Westport, Florida. Yeah, and we supply absolutely phenomenal doghouse flowers. I don't care how bad you've upset your other half, and whether you're chained to the kennel, a bouquet of flowers from us, hand delivered for £99 to your daughter this afternoon, will get you out of the doghouse into your partner's heart and back into your relationship where it was at its best point. For 99 pounds. So if you're in the doghouse, so now I'm talking about the avatar yeah. husbands or partners that are in the doghouse. I've told the price and I've told the action and when it can done. And if, if you want to get out of the doghouse immediately, give me a call. So I've got my call to action. So if I sell that, my referral value, ask and I shall receive. If I ask for that and I've got an audience, an intent audience, oh, my mate John's in the doghouse, Lee. Oh, yeah, you want to talk to Lee, you get you out of the doghouse. Now, that's a referral value of, say, £100. By the time I pay for the flowers, by the time I pay for the delivery, by the time I pay for the staff, by the time I pay for the flat, my referral value is very limited. Mm -hmm. And if I get, <coughs> a, like, a referral a week, 52 a week from a paid network, that's brilliant, you think. But really, by the time I take my profit out, my time out and everything, it's probably worth 30 quid a referral. So 50 weeks of the year, what's that, 1,500 quid? Probably pay me 1,500 quid to be in there. So it's not worth me asking for doghouse flowers. So I could say, well, I need, you need to go up, Lee. You need to go up into the market. I mean, where, do you do wedding flowers? Or corporate flowers? Oh, we do wedding flowers. Why don't you tell us about the wedding flowers? Yeah, well, I want everybody to know we do doghouse flowers and that because that's the cash flow. I need the cash flow. Yeah, but... Perhaps you should mix it up a bit, do a bit of cash flow communication and a bit of like long term communication. 
Hi, I'm, I do doghouse flowers, and I also do pride of bouquets and pride of flowers, and we can dress your corporate out in blah, blah, blah. So now I'm spreading my message wider. Yeah. But if Paul's sister's getting married, yeah, it's like, now my sister's just got engaged. Brilliant. When she get married? I said, well, they haven't decided on a date, but probably in a couple of years. All right, can you let her know that you've got a mate of yours? Now, so I'm two years in front. That's no good for cash flow. So... Paul's sister could be getting married and been engaged 18 months ago. So now she, she might be getting married three months from now. I say, oh, when did she get married? Three, oh, that'd be brilliant for me, Paul. And not only that, because she's your sister, I'll look out for her. And you go and talk to your sister. And she said, I oh, booked the flowers oh, 18 months ago, Paul. Oh, but Lee's brilliant at flowers. Oh, you want to say, uh, Paul, look, no, I've got it sorted. Do you know how hard it is to plan a wedding? Yeah, right. And you come back to me, Lee, I've done my best, mate. And this is with your sister. This is why I call it Vegas networking, see? I mean, when it shows up, it's, it's the, are the stars aligned? So if I'm asking for doghouse flowers, I've got to find somebody else's misery so I can give them the happiness. Yeah. Or, yeah, somebody's got the happiest day, the happiest day of their life book, let's say, and I'm trying to inject in the timeline that I don't know when it is. So I've got no – I don't know where the individual is. So if I'm – Net selling, which is that's what it is. I'm net. I'm looking for Paul to find me somebody that wants to buy pens, phones, or flowers in this timeline, so I can have some cash flow, or at least in the next two or three months. Yeah. So net and selling. Every, so we. So we are, when you are net selling, which is running somewhere in amongst the veins of networking or even net repeating, what yeah. we're doing is we're asking we're asking the network to actually sell for us through referrals. And that's the kind of You've got that's it. probably ninety nine percent of where most networking. Yeah, but to me, that's not networking, and that and this is where I think B and I, the world, people might go into it. It's absolutely brilliant. It is brilliant if you understand some concepts, but some people won't get get trained because they already know everything. I'm there to sell. There's twenty odd people in the room, and they all need pens. So at some point, they're going to buy pens from me. I mean, that's abusing and using your network. That's not a networking. That I call it safari networking, that type of networking. Yeah. They're on the menu. Yeah. And I've got them in my sites. Yeah. Or toll, toll booth networking. Yeah. You can, you can, um, 45 minutes with me will say it will save you 10,000 euro over the next uh, six months in your business. If you want to save six, 10,000 euro in the next six months of your business. Reach out and have a business one to one with me. That's that's toll booth networking. Yeah. However, if I want to go up into what in what Lee Tunney Ware or people like me would call yeah, network. And bear in mind, B and I know this. Some of this one I'm going to teach you came from B and I. A lot of it came from incentive. However, I knew a lot of this, but I wasn't aware of it. It was only when I heard that speech and that flown that my brain thought, oh. Oh, I get it. I get it. And I and then I realized in my own life I was already doing it, but I wasn't consciously aware. It, so let, I'm still in the flower industry. Okay. I'm not I'm I still do doghouse flowers. I mean that's just one of my products. I still do wedding flowers. That's just one of my products. Yeah. And I do very well at wedding flowers. Yeah. But I ain't put no strategy behind it. I've got no goals behind it. I've got no no I don't know how to go to market in a way that allows my business to grow really, really quick. Mm -hmm. But to put some thought into it, and I think, well, who's already doing business with the type of people I want to do business with? So who, who's the top end client for you, Lee? Brides. Right. So who does business with brides? The priest. Yeah. He's the first point of contact, you imagine, or the vicar or the, or the registry. Yeah. The registrar. So they're the first point of contact because once they've decided we're getting married <clears throat> and they pick the date, then they're going to have to book the church or book where the place that book the registrar. So that's the first point of contact. Second, most people have some form of gathering in a hotel. So they're going to have to book the gathering. The priest you'd imagine comes first or the registrar. Second would be the hotel. Now, after the hotel, it could be, catering but most likely the hotel will do that it could be a band it could be a disco it could be a photographer videographer yeah wedding cars all these things are in the market hairdresser hair and makeup 
nails, yeah, wedding hire, yeah, suit um, um, tailoring. Oh, so if I look at the market and I see all the people in the market, because the standard networker won't see them because they're looking for their clients. I'm not looking for my clients. I'm nowhere looking for my clients. I'm looking for the people that already have the clients I want. So my first point of call, I might think, well, do I know any priests? And you might think, well, they're a bit tricky, but not in Ireland. I don't know a lot of priests. So if I was in the wedding market, I'd go and talk to Father Charlie or whatever, and I'd just say, Father Charlie, I don't know if you're aware, but I do a lot of weddings. Yeah, and we do some amazing bouquets. If you'd like, I'll dress the church for you on a Sunday. I could really do with growing my business because, one, I want to help the community. I want to more jobs, and I want to make my family's life better. I'd really appreciate your help and support in doing that in helping the community and my family. Would you be up for that, sir? Is yes. this now, now networking or is this growing your business? Well, well this is, I, well, no, this is where this is networking because I'm talking to the person that's got the audience and most likely going to be the person that's going to marry the people. Wow. So when they come to book the church and he might go, and just out of curiosity, Paul, who's doing your flowers for the wedding? And Paul might go, well, we, we haven't done that yet. We haven't got the hotel. Well, would you do me a favour? Would you keep Lee Tunney where in mind? Because Lee, I don't know if you've ever seen the flowers in the church. You see that? Yeah, they do all that for us. And, and he's, they're a very good uh, family business. And they put all these flowers in here on a Sunday for free. Wow. Now, if I were, if I'm doing flowers, this would be who I would network with. Undertakers, priests, DJs videographers, photographers, all of those. But my number one, the one I would focus on the most, would be five-star wedding planners or five-star hotels that do weddings. Why? I would go in and talk to the sales and marketing team, and in my network, I would ask my network, five-star hotels, who do you know that's a manager or works in the sales and marketing or is a wedding planner or runs events in a five-star hotel in a Pacific targeted area. And I would ask my network, to, and then I would see you know any of them, yeah? Do you, have you done business with them? Oh, yes. Are, are they a friend of yours? I would, I, now, then my business one-to-one, -one, if I've already built the relationship, this is with my network, my business one-to-one -one with Paul, can we have a one-to-one -one so that I can showcase you the way we want you to connect us? Wow, Lee, most, most people then are networking back to front, where they are you got it. focusing on the sale, not focusing on the people that can create the sales. You've got it, because the five-star wedding planner and a good five-star hotel, one, I'm in the upper echelons of the market, I'm in the lobster and caviar market. Yeah. You know, if my flowers don't suit that, then I'll take it down to a four-star or a three-star. Who does my product suit? Yeah. But who's already doing business with the types of clients I want to do business with? If I network to them and build a strong, sincere, genuine, honourable relationship and protect that relationship, not just one, don't want all your eggs in one basket, Yeah. then I can actually, <clears throat> one, I can either just stay in the geographic area and just say we do flowers within 30 miles of here in any given direction. If my location doesn't suit me, I can't expect the market to travel to me. I might have to go and put an office in a target location in a city or somewhere like that. Then all my all my marketing, all my exposure needs to be in the geographic. So, for instance, who for? Not my, not for my customer, for my network. I need to showcase the five star wedding planners, the five star wedding cars, the five star DJs, whatever. I need to showcase that I'm the flowers that puts the extra star in their wedding. Wow, so with my is. 60 seconds and my elevator pitch, I need my – or I can say oh, I have clients as well. I'm happy to collaborate with you. Anyone that books through me, yeah, I'm going to recommend you your hotel, yeah. So, Lee, you you're making, so you are making the connections look good from the service you're providing to the customers. Yeah, I, I don't want – customers i don't want to network to customers now that happens that that happens what i prefer to do is network to somebody that's doing all the social media that's already got a foothold in the market established foothold who already has value to the end user that they're their place of choosing that they've got a waiting list and i want the wedding planner or the head of sales and marketing or the manager to realize that i'm an asset to the hotel honorably 
Yeah. And there's a win-win here. And that then once we've established that relationship, whether I have to jump for a few hoops to get it, that then they recommend me to every bride and groom that comes into the hotel. And if I've got three or four good hotels like that, so all my eggs in one, aren't in one basket because the manager could leave, the wedding planner could leave, they could get ill, I need to safeguard my business. I need at the same time to put a strategy in place for the sales and marketing team for the hotel so they can see I'm not just delivering flowers, that I've got some sort of way of exponentially growing the hotel's social media. So I, I'm getting flowers from them. The photographer's working with me and giving me flowers. The photographer's getting exposure. The hotel's getting exposure. My flowers get exposure. The bride isn't being used or nor's the groom, nor's the, the wedding as some sort of marketing ploy. And done correctly if everybody works as a unit because mm. everybody is serving the bride and groom. And if the bride and groom get served and they are overjoyed with the day, yeah. then when the wedding, when the photographer takes the photographs, the people are showing, oh, they're lovely flowers. Oh, they're done. oh that's uh, Lee Tunney Ware, Westbrook Florist. Absolutely brilliant. That the photographer showcasing my flowers wow. in a way with the bride and with the bridesmaids so the memory, so now every one of the products is now supporting me and every one of the things I do is supporting them. It's a win-win collaboration. We make the bride's day more special than it can ever be. I might go the extra mile for the bride and for the hotel to showcase it. Obviously, I need to know my metrics. I can't be giving stuff away because I was, can't be doing it. Once you deliver your standard, you can't lower it because then yeah. you, you've tricked people. You've got to hold that standard or even over-deliver. Think of the next thing you can do because then you become the person that makes the bride feel safe, that makes the the the, um, wed the wedding planner feel safe, where they know, we, we, well, what about that flower thing? Don't go near any other flower. You use utilise Lee. Why? Because Lee understands what he's doing. His team, they're second to none. We are not risking losing Lee. Wow. Let me let we'll me see, jump in yeah. there. So, Lee, let's say that because we want to go on to the next net net next mm -hmm. networking category. So, effectively, it should be called net gathering, out of net together, net. not net. Well, that is. Well, you can't you can't gathering. be successful on your own. Well, I mean, it's not networking. Like, if it's just, do you want to buy a pen? Yeah. I mean that that stale boy stuff on the corner. <laughs> what, what, which what which watch do you like? <laughs> yeah. And going in, and then even worse, if you put the fake bit up, and how are you today, Paul, or whatever? Anyway, let me tell you about my pens. Yeah. I mean, we, who doesn't want to do business with somebody that isn't authentic? Who wants to do business yeah. with somebody that is authentic? Yeah. So I mean, you, let me. So we're going to. So yeah. here we are, viewers. We're going to switch this up. Net together in. Just write that down. Net together in. And we're going to move on because we've got two categories to cover before we finish here. Now, I don't know if I have these the wrong way around, Lee, because I want to talk about net worlding and net yeah. futuring. So now, now let me just say for you all people watching this video today, Lee is an expert in networking. Um, he's part of the ECI uh, community. Um, and if you go on to LinkedIn, you'll find Lee on there, the ECI, and you'll find that Lee is one of the leading gurus in understanding the true power of networking but understand networking is a very sold out word right now it's as bad as double glazing and car sales yeah. people it is it's sold out yeah. and when you talk when you just put the word networking into conversation it's almost as bad as saying you're a business coach people yeah. have just lost interest in it but here's where we are lee is an absolute expert and we're bringing that expertise into this call here purely because we want you to not not get stressed about the amount of time or empty time you are putting into networking events that are run so poorly, so badly, so empty. That's not a discourage or a witch hunt. It's just fact right now mm. in the business world. Please don't see it as a negative. It is what it is. Net world in. Now, I experienced this in ECI. Brexit events that you put on there, Lee. You are net world in. You mm. are now... Not just, you know, it's not just international networking. You are you are becoming part of a global community. Now, let's talk about networking. What, what, what does that look like? Why is that important? Even if you are a local business, mind you, local is the new international. Maybe there's no such mm. thing as a local business anymore. Well, <clears throat> it depends on your goals. So I would I would say 
it comes net future incomes first because it's the future of your business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are just an assessment and not so it's true, but just say it's true. Sometimes we're spending too much time working in our business than on our business. And because we're in our business, been there, done that. So don't hear it in a derogatory way. We're, we're, we've become full-time firefights. Yeah? We're running in, running there, doing this, doing that, trying to please everybody because we're caught in the mechanics of our business. Let's say that's not everybody, but let's say that that's part of the problem. So when we go net futuring, so let's say I'm just a local business. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and all I, I all I'm ever going to do is work within uh, um, a thirty mile radius. That's fine, and that's my target market. Um, now, the international networking can give you a lot of skills because when you're not when you're listening to something that you're not caught up in, you can hear so much because mm -hmm. you think, oh, and your assumption is that doesn't apply to me. That doesn't apply to me. That doesn't apply to me. Whether you're networking locally, nationally, or internationally, it, it's the same process. So, and what a lot of people think, and there's one bit I want to throw in here, because this applies locally, nationally, and internationally, and this this is probably the, the clip around the ear where we go, what? Oh, no. When you're doing it 60 seconds, yeah, or anything, so it seems like I've gone back, but I haven't, because this comes in line with net future and networking. You can't communicate your goals within 60 seconds. And then when you have your business one-to-ones, like you're meeting with meetings, members of your network, you've got to have a bit of rapport building, you know, laugh and a joke and build it up. So what a lot of people do is they go into networks or communities and they have a meeting with everybody and then they expect one meeting to transform the business. No, you don't need to meet with anybody and everybody because you'll meet with nobody, B-O-D-Y, nobody. If you're not getting in the hearts and minds of people, genuinely, authentically, sincerely, to do that, you need to know where your business is going. You need to know what your goals are. How are we going to expand out to 30 mile or 30 kilometer radius? No. So what's our main focus in here? Who do we serve in the marketplace? Well, how do you mean who do we serve? What industry? So if I take it back to an Indian company that came to me and they do certification for um, cosmetic creams and different things like that. They certify all the stuff, so like for international companies. And they reached out to me and they said, um, uh, through a friend of mine, and they asked me would I have a chat with them. And they said they wanted to get into, um, come out of India to more international. So I said, oh, fair enough. I said, which countries? And this comes to the next future in then net welding. So it's how do you mean? I said, well, which countries do you want to get into? They said, all in, all in English speaking countries. I said, oh, brilliant. Such as, and they, well, um, um, well, the US, um, Canada, Australia, uh, the UK, Ireland, I said, brilliant. Which one first? Uh, well, um, well uh, uh, I suppose Ireland, you suppose. Well, Ireland, okay. What part of Ireland first? Uh, I don't know. I don't know Ireland very well. All right. So you haven't put a lot of thought into it. Wow. And you're a bit. You're a business. So networking or net welding is this. Which if you're going network, you want an international brand. Which country first? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to take footholds in each country, which part of the country? So if it was the UK, you might say, well, London, London, Birmingham, Edinburgh, Manchester, yeah, and you go through the cities. Which one first? London. What part of London? Where's your market? Are you in the chicken nuggets, burger and chips market? Are you in the low end, high end, high end steak and chips, lobster and caviar? Well, we're in the lobster and caviar market. Fair enough. So you're in, you're in around Kensington and SW1. So we're going into London, Pacific, into that postcode, air code, yeah, zip code. Right. What industry? And then they tell the industry, who's doing business with that industry? What what where what are their business addresses? Who's the manager? Who's the owner? Who this is 
net futuring. This is so you, different, only, eh? It's so oh, yeah, because, well, only. where's the strategy? You can't yeah. be Vegas networking. Do you want to play roulette with your business, with your with your sons and daughters' education going to college? I mean, why are you working in the first place? Do you want to play roulette with your retirement? Because if you're in business and you're actually going out and you're putting the time into it, the time should serve you, and you should know where to serve your time. Bloody hell, people are so generalising, so generalising. Can't be rent meeting with anybody and everybody. You meet with anybody and everybody, you're meeting with N-O-B-O-D-Y. Nobody. Oh and everybody's everybody's looking for somebody, so they're networking with anybody and everybody, and what do they end up getting? Nobody. Oh, but I'll take some pens off you while I'm here, Lee. <laughs> And you go, well, thanks. And then you sit down and you think, well, I've met with 10 people this week and I've sold 60 pence. <laughs> What's the profit on that? Um, well, it's hardly worth adding up. But it's like, yeah, I was looking for bigger orders. Right, but what are you going to do then? And this comes back to the net repeating. Well, I suppose next week I just, I just have to be resilient. I have to put my nose in the grindstone. I'm oh, going to do what? Are, my word. And they just keep doing the same That's thing over and over mental. again. That's net repeating at its finest, isn't it? Yes, where if you actually said, what's your target market? Yeah, and well... So, and everybody's networking out to the target market. That isn't networking, that's net selling. Yes. And and then they're, they're giving an elevator pitch or a 60 seconds to their target market where the elevator pitch in 60 seconds is to somebody that's got your target market. <laughs> that's I'm the loving difference. loving how this is structured because it makes yeah. so much sense. You know, yes. the net future thing is just wow. And just so it's heard, it's this easy. I and like, ha, and I'm sure anybody on this has been on holiday. Now, it can be it can, this can be heard in the wrong way, but I don't mean it in the wrong way. I just want it to be heard. I, but I don't. There's no negative or positive on this. Yeah, I have dyslexia, so I don't book anything online. Yeah, if I want to go away or whatever, I want to go away. And I might even put it into action. But if it has to be booked online, I'll get Ross to do it because I've ended up. You'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I end up getting wrong sometimes, yeah. Um, so, Ros, yeah, I would trust Ros to book the holidays. Yeah. Yeah, we decide where we're going or whatever. And why am I talking about this? And, and the reason I said that about Ros, I said, don't want people thinking that Ros books the holidays because she's the woman. Ros books the holidays because she's got the skill that I ain't got, mm -hmm. yeah. But so, you know, and now it depends who's got the time and who's got who's got the skill. You always pick the right person to do the thing. So the point I'm trying to make to you is the woman of the house or the woman in the business might have this skill, yeah, and the man mightn't have it. So you've got to hear it. And if you, if you haven't got it, you go and ask the person who has got it. That could be your wife or your partner. I don't know. So please don't hear me in a derogatory sense. I'm just trying to... Yeah, because if you haven't got the skill and you haven't done it, to organise a holiday, it's quite a tricky thing. Because you look at it, you don't just pick a place, you pick for the sun, brilliant. But then with us, we've got like 11 kids. So what are the kids going to do while we're on holiday? How long are we going for? Two weeks. What do we need to pack? There's so much involved in that two-week holiday. Now, me, yeah, because Ros does all of that, yeah, I pack my bits in a case, yeah, and, I, and then we get the, I put the bags in the car, whatever, we get to the airport, we get the bags out of the car, park the car, do all that. That might be my role in it, yeah, but Ros organises all of that. So hear me the right way, because Ros, it's a very, very unique skill. Mm -hmm. A lot of people take it for granted. But then you get there, and not only that, it's a lot of responsibility on it, because you're spending two weeks in a place that's rubbish. Yeah. How do you think Ros feels? But we've never been on a rubbish holiday. So Ros has got a really good skill in it. She's had to organise passports, organise tickets, organise transfers, yeah, organise accommodation, yeah, or everything. The activities for the kids, sit down with the kids and go through it so it's wholesome or whatever. Why am I saying all this? Because that's sort of like net future in the net world. Mm. So if you haven't sat down in your business and looked, where are we going to go in our business? What activities and who are we going to do them with? It's that simple. It's the same skill. Wow. But some people get caught in the head. So it might be like, and the reason I'm saying it this way is women normally have got this skill in spades. And um, 
men, I don't think they, they, they've got it the same. Now, men have got it on a building site. I don't hear it in a derogatory way. Men seem to have very good skills in organising certain things that they can get their hands on. Yeah, as in, right, we get, get that timber over there, let's grab that. They seem to have the skill there. Women seem to have it in a, in a bear in mind. I've just used the holidays as an example, but uh, we've got a lovely new bathroom in our house. Ross's design. Gorgeous. Yeah. Most of the design and stuff in our house, Ross will sit down. We've got a stable block being built out the back. Ross has drawn all the plans out, everything. She knows where all the walls are, everything. So so I'm assuming that every woman is like my phenomenal wife, Ross. Yeah. That she can sit down and do all that. I can do that. Yeah, <laughs> you're but, not, my so friend. right. But so I'm assuming because I value that in Ross, I, and I I don't bother getting involved in it. I say, Ross, all oh, you right to sort of such and such. Yeah. Now, when it's the other way around, when the, we don't get in, in in each other's way with our skills, and the reason I've said that is because I don't know if you're in partners with your partner in business. I am. Yeah, and it's same as me. So 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 sometimes what we can do is. And I've done this, so we're going to do this. And then Rosa asked me questions because she's, she, well, do we need the passports? Do we need this? Today? I'm just translating it. So net future in a net worlding is you've got to know where you're going and what country or what county or what town or what village. And then you've got to look at that demographic and see where your segment. Don't try and be all things to all people because you'll be a busy fool. Because if you can quantify who your target market is, and then who does business within that target market, you can quantify who you need to connect with and spend time with. Wow. And then when you have these business one-to-ones, and bear in mind then you've got to look at the the trust curve, the relationship curve authentically. You can't, this isn't, this can be used as a superpower in the negative. Can't use and abuse people. There's an old story, Dennis Waitley. Dennis Waitley would be, like a personal development guru. He, he's uh, one of my heroes, yeah. And I learned so much from the guy. changed my life, really. Um, but he's, it is a story, and whether I do it justice, I don't know. But he said, um, in ancient Greek, it became a custom to have a statue in your garden. If you had a statue in your garden, it represented you had success and status, yeah, and you were somebody worth talking to. So once this custom became apparent that if you had a statue in your garden, the Paul was a good guy. If Lee had a statue in his garden, he was a good guy, he's worth talking to. Everybody wanted statues in the garden. So the stonemasons, some were experts, like Michelangelo, Kraft, and David, yeah. Some were so so, they just wanted to cash in. Now the expert stonemasons, yeah, they could deliver something that was awe inspiring and that would that would be as good today as it was a thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. However, the not so good uh, stonemasons that just wanted to cash in on what some might call a trend, they might be chipping away at the face and the features or the bust, like, and they might not knock a tiny bit of the ear off or take too much off and dig the eye too much deep. So what they used to do was get wax and get the sandstone or the granite grit, put it in the wax and mould the eye in if they wow. took a tiny bit off, and they, oh, it would still look perfect. Until it sat out in the sun for six months. Yeah, and then obviously all the defects were shown. But a good sculptor, it would still look to, good today as it did a thousand years ago. A bow sculptor, yeah, half the eye would be missing, the nose would be missing, and it looked good. <gasps> That's brilliant. And then obviously it'd been being out in the sun for a while, the wax would melt, and you'd see all the imperfections. So some might say showing your true colours. You've got to be authentic in what you do. You've got to be real. You've got to be sincere. You've got to be genuine. You can't expect a free ride. Mm-hmm. Can't be like Mike and Matt flying back to the future, grabbing hold of the back of the truck and ducking down so we can't be seen and being wheeled around. Yeah, my mate years ago, we were driving along in a car and he had a bike and he used to hold on to the passenger's door. He put the window down, he used to hold on, we can lift the town at about 40 mile an hour. <laughs> Madness, really. But we were only like about 17. We used to think it was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes you can get a free ride if you've got a mate. But how do you get the mates in the target industry? We've gone through life organically, like a leaf on the wind, and we've met these people at school and different things like that. When we go out intentionally to build relationships, genuine, sincere, authentic relationships, like a, a like Michelangelo carving David, we've got to know what they want. 
We've got to know how we can serve them. That's why we build a big network. That's why we might have multiple meetings with loads of different people. So when I meet with the wedding florist or the, the wedding planner, and obviously I want to do business with the wedding planner, I can see the opportunity for me. What's in it for them? Now, I can deliver a five-star experience and really make them look good. I'm not going to compete on price. I don't want to lower my offering down because I want to do business with them over a period of time. I can't be paying my way in. That isn't networking. That's net bribing. Wow. I need to I need to know where the wedding planner's having problems. Yeah, we're having trouble with de- with uh, um the DJ DJ keeps messing about. Yeah, I know a good DJ. See, see yeah. not just now, wow. I oh, get now that. now so I might be talking. So Paul, how can I help you? Well, I'm looking for a really good account, an international one, because we're moving our business internationally. Well, brilliant. Yeah, leave leave it with me, buddy. I'll get you a good account. And I go to my network and I go to my trusted advisors. If I've built a good network, I've got accountants, I've got solicitors. And even if I I might know somebody who's a business coach who knows accounts and solicitors, I've built strategic core relationships in certain sectors that surround the people that I want to do business with, as in the five-star hotels. So I might have a builder that works very good with hotels. I might have an architect, the 3D design like architect, whatever, that helps hotels. I might have somebody in my network that does wedding fur- uh, the furniture for hotels. I might have an electrician or, or somebody that does uh, fire regulations for hotels, fire training for hotels. I need to know what the hotel needs, and I build that network wow. of experts, experts absolute experts so when i go in and they've got a problem i can say i'll leave that with me paul i know a guy and then i can go if i've served my network i can go paul you couldn't do me a favor yeah what do you need me couldn't go along to i don't know the mayfair hotel for me could you it's a favor buddy yeah i'll sort this one out i need you to go in and see the wedding planner They're having terrible troubles with their fire alarms when they've got the weddings on They've called their, their, their people, but they're just a, a name and a number. They're on hold for, yeah. Could you go in and just do it as a favour for me? Of course it will, Wow. So, so, your, so to wrap this, your shape of what networking, net futuring and net worlding looks like is you're not, you're not just providing a product, you're actually providing contacts that can improve the people that you network that can make their business better, more productive, more quality based, more profit, more easier. Yeah. So you're not actually yeah, saying buy this off me. You're saying I can provide you this service with these people yeah. also that can improve your business. So, for example, I've got a friend of mine who's Louise McDonald. Yeah, Louise McDonald's written a couple of books. She was at one of our networking events recently. A couple of books on social media. She would be in Ireland, probably the expert on social media. Spoken on world stages virtually and in the real world, on the subject, yeah? Written a couple of books on it. And um, she would be really good in certain parts of social media. Not all parts, certain parts. So if I was talking to the sales and marketing manager, yeah, on hotels, I might ask them what they do on their social media. And I might say, um, yeah, and uh, do you know Louise McDonald? Oh, yeah, I've I'm, I'm, I'm watched some of her videos, whatever, brilliant. Um, if you want, I'll have a chat with Louise and ask her if she should come in and just do like a an hour's talk for the sales and marketing team to just to, mm-hmm. to dot your I's and cross your T's and maybe give you a bit more exposure in the market. Would that be a benefit for you? Yeah, and well, what's your job? Oh, no, I'll ask her to come in and do it as a favor. Now, I'm showcasing Louise. Yeah. I'm supporting the hotel. And now I'm a valued person in their network because wherever their problems is, if I can help them stretch a bit further and get a few more points on their social media and get a couple of new clients in this month, and they're going to refer me, I'm helping me, I'm helping Louise, I'm helping them. Wow. So many people are minding their own business instead of sharing business. It's collaborative. You can't be successful on your own. If I'm not going to look at, and this is this is now, we just take it one step further. Quantum networking is in for the future. Wow. A lot of people are networking from themselves. So now let me flip it so you hear it. Yeah? Bear in mind, I don't mean that because it, it gets lost in translation. 
So have you heard of, say, artists like uh, Beyonce, Elvis, the Beatles? Have you heard of them? Of course. Have you listened to them? Yes. Right. Have you been to a Beyonce concert? No. Has you ever had a meeting with Beyonce? No. Have you ever had a meeting with any one of the Beatles? No. Right. The point I'm making is, how come you know of these people? Look, and this is where it gets, if you just hear me on this, word of mouth marketing is not the, the words do not come from your mouth. They come from your network's mouth. Wow. So you have to give them your marketing materials, your information. When you're having these one-to-ones, it's not a cup of tea and a ginger nut. It might be to build rapport so they see you and they see the authentic statue of you, not the BS, not mm. trying to please Paul. It's got to be real, otherwise it's just all lies. Once they know what you're looking for and they're in that targeted area or know someone that's in that targeted area because we go, it's networking. Paul, do you know anyone in London and Mayfair? No. Right. Um, do you know anyone in London, the Mayfair League? Yeah. What do you want to eat? It's specifically Mayfair, yeah. Um, President of Rotary Club in Mayfair? You know the President of Rotary Club in Mayfair? Yeah. President of um, um, Toastmasters? I don't know them, but I could get to know them. I've, I've got a good network in Toastmasters. But I do know the President of Rotary. Yeah. Um, it, 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 we need some people in thing. Would you like me to connect you with the owner of, say, Tramps Nightclub in Mayfair? The members club? Oh, that would be a good connection, there. Eh? Because once I know you're geographic, now if I don't know anyone there, I'll go through my network. Yeah. And I will go to, say, Mike Deacon in London. And I'll say, Mike, and Mike's a brilliant guy. See, Mike is the serving president of the oldest BNI chapter chapter in, in London, in, well, in the UK, which mm -hmm. is in London. I would say to Mike, do you know anyone in Mayfield? In this specific industry, I don't. Can you ask around for me? Yeah. Now, when I ask around, it means he's going to go into his core network and say to probably 10 people, do you know anybody in this industry in that area? Yes, brilliant. How well do you know them? What's your relationship like, zero to 10? Do they trust you? Yeah, why? I need you to give a friend of mine a strong introduction. Would you have a meeting with him and he'll educate you? This guy's literally top end and he will serve you to the highest standard. And he's also going to ask you what he can do for you. This bloke's very well connected, not just locally, nationally, but this guy's got a very top-end international network. But if people can't tell you their goals and their industry and where and where they're going and the timeline for that, because and what slows us down? Not knowing the right people. How do you get to know the right people? Networking. But if you're doing Vegas, if you're shooting craps, you're going to get crap. You've got to say, this is where we're going over five years. This is the industry we're going to serve. This is the zip code, postcodes, or air codes. These are the towns, cities, and villages we're going to go into. And these are the people we want to network with. And this is the target client that they're already doing business with. Wow. Because, Liam, yeah. It's been, this has been beautiful. And I really ask, and again, why we went into this today is Lee is an absolute expert when it comes to networking, net togethering, net futuring and net worlding and quantum networking, which is new for me here today. You know, Lee is also, you look for the ECI there, um, Brexit event is coming up. We got all these things. Lee is the front runner in this with his, um, with his, um, associates and things because we won't go much into that today, but, um, go on to um, LinkedIn. You'll find Lee Tannyware on there. Um, also comment here and um, and we'll always get back to you. Lee certainly does. He's very loyal in getting back to people. He's amazing in that way. I wish I had your skill and patience with our Lee. That's for sure. I'm still learning though, thankfully. Um, but, We're all learning. Yeah. But where do you start today? Just pick a goal in an area because it can be very confusing. Yeah, It's a bit like doing a shopping list. And you might only want milk. And then what else will I get while I'm there? Just focus on milk. Where do you want to grow your business in the next three months? In what area? In what demographic? What's the psychographics of that demographic, as in what's the pain point? And who's already doing business with them? Now, how can you build a relationship with somebody that's already got 50 or 100 or 200 or 500 clients in your Pacific target market? And then if you literally, authentically, it has to be authentic, Genuinely, sincerely, honorably, reach out. And you reach out for a brainstorm collaborative conversation. 
Now, if you haven't got visibility or credibility in the market, you might get the profitability. So what can you do to elevate, lift your presence in the marketplace? How do you be seen in their industry? Not the whole world. McDonald's, I mean, Gucci, let's say Gucci or Armani. They've only got about 500 shops, but they're an international brand. Now, McDonald's has got about 40,000 outlets. Yeah. But Armani and Gucci have only got about 500. I think Gucci's got 528 international outlets, and that's in that. But they're in a specific location. So if you're in a high end, mid end, low end brand, find your equivalent in the market that's a national brand or an international brand and see where they put their shops. And then network in that location. If they're doing business here, yeah, because then you can get a snapshot on the market. You want, yeah? Because have it, rather than trying to go into certain postcodes, a certain po and the last bit I'll leave you with, anyone you want to do business with is either serving somebody in a different zip code or postcode or air code. So if you're at a state agent, you're looking, the people that want to move normally want to move from one postcode, zip code or air code to another. So you might be networking in the wrong zip code, in the goal zip code. No, you need to be working where they are to where they're going. Wow. So sometimes you have to go back one zip code yeah. because you're you're going to be the bridge to their transition. Wow, that makes so much sense. So anyway, fantastic. it's good to be here with you. Lee, it's been fantastic. So hey, until this time next week, everybody have an amazing week. Reach out to us. As we say, subscribe, like, comment. We're always here. And um, we're going to say bye for now.